Hi everyone, welcome to day 15 of our daily Bible reading. Let's settle ourselves in with a word of prayer. Faithful God, in a world of changing seasons and fleeting moments, grant us the desire to keep returning to your word. May it become as essential to our spirit as food is to our bodies. In moments of busyness or weariness, rekindle our passion, reminding us of the joy and enlightenment awaiting in every scripture. Amen. So today we begin at Genesis, the 31st chapter, verse 17 through 32, 12. So Jacob arose and set his children and his wives on camels, and he drove away all his livestock, all the property that he had gained, the livestock in his possession that he had acquired in Padam, Padan Aram to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. Now Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole her father's household gods. And Jacob deceived Laban the Aramean, in that he did not tell him that he intended to flee. So he fled with all that he had. Starting out, he crossed the Euphrates and set his face toward the hill country of Gilead. Laban overtakes Jacob. On the third day, Laban was told that Jacob had fled, so he took his kinsfolk with him and pursued him for seven days until he caught up with him in the hill country of Gilead. But God came to Laban the Aramean in a dream by night and said to him, Take heed that you say not a word to Jacob, either good or bad. Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country, and Laban with his kinsfolk camped in the hill country of Gilead. Laban said to Jacob, What have you done? You have deceived me and carried away my daughters like captives of the sword. Why did you flee secretly and deceive me and not tell me? I would have sent you away with mirth and songs and tambourine and lyre. And why did you not permit me to kiss my sons and my daughters farewell? What you have done is foolish. It is in my power to do you harm. But the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Take heed that you speak to Jacob neither good nor bad, even though you had to go because you longed greatly for your father's house. Why did you steal my, good, my gods? Jacob answered Laban, because I was afraid, for I thought that you would take your daughters from me by force. But anyone with whom you find your gods shall not live. In the presence of our kinsfolk, point out what I have that is yours, and take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen the gods. So Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the tent of the two maids, but he did not find them. And he went out of Leah's tent and entered Rachel's. Now Rachel had taken the household gods and put them in the camel's saddle and sat on them. Laban felt all about in the tent, but did not find them. And she said to her father, Let not my lord be angry that I cannot rise before you, for the way of women is upon me. So he searched, but did not find the household gods. Then Jacob became angry and upbraided Laban. Jacob said to Laban, What is my offense? What is my sin? That you have hotly pursued me. Although you have felt about through all my goods, what have you found of all your household goods? Set it here before my kinsfolk and your kinsfolk, so that they may decide between us two. These twenty years I have been with you, your ewes and your fem female goats have not miscarried, and I have not eaten the rams of your flocks. That which was torn by wild beasts I did not bring to you. I bore the loss of it myself. My hand you required it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. It was like this with me. By day the heat consumed me, and the cold by night, and my sleep fled from my eyes. These twenty years I have been in your house. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters and six years for your flock, and you have changed my wages ten times. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had not been on my side, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. 
God saw my affliction and the labor of my hands and rebuked you last night. Laban and Jacob make a covenant. Then Laban answered and said to Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, the children are my children, the flocks are my flocks, and all that you see is mine. But what can I do today about these daughters of mine or about their children whom they have borne? Come now, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. And Jacob said to his kinsfolk, Gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there by the heap. Laban called it Jager Sehadutha, but Jacob called it Gilead. Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me today. Therefore he called it Gilead and the pillar Mitzpah, for he said, The Lord watch between you and me when we are absent one from the other. If you ill treat my daughters, or if you take wives in addition to my daughters, though no one else is with us, remember that God is witness between you and me. Then Laban said to Jacob, See this heap and see the pillar, which I have set between you and me. This heap is a witness, and the pillar is a witness, that I will not pass beyond this heap to you, and you will not pass beyond this heap and this pillar to me for harm. May the God of Abraham and the God of Nahor judge between us. So Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac, and Jacob offered a, sac a sacrifice on the height and called his kinsfolk to eat bread. And they ate bread and tarried all night in the hill country. Early in the morning, Laban rose, rose up and kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them. And he departed and returned home. Chapter 32. Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. So he called that place Mahanaim. Jacob sends presents to appease Esau. Jacob sent messengers before him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the country of Edom, instructing them, Thus you shall say to my lord Esau, Thus says your servant Jacob, I have lived with Laban as an alien and stayed until now, and I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male and female slaves, and I have sent to tell my Lord, in order that I may find favor in your sight. The messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and he is coming to meet you, and four hundred men are with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people who were with him and the flocks and herds and camels into two companies, thinking, If Esau comes to the one company and destroys it, then the company that is left will escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, Ham, and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, who said to me, Return to your country and to your kindred, and I will do you good. I am not worthy of the least of all the steadfast love and all the faithfulness that you have shown to your servant. For with only my staff I crossed this Jordan, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, please, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I am afraid of him. He may come and kill us all, the mothers with children. Yet you have said, I will surely do you good and make your offspring as the sand of the sea, which cannot be counted because of their number. And we move on to Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse 24 through the 11th chapter, verse 6. A disciple is not above the teacher nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? Whom to fear? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. 
Rather, fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Not peace, but a sword. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Rewards Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Chapter 11. Now when Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and proclaim his message to their cities. Messengers from John the Baptist When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those with a skin disease are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. In psalm 13, Prayer for Deliverance from Enemies to the Leader, a Psalm of David. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. In Proverbs 3, verses 16 through 18. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called happy. Well, this has been the word of God and the word of life. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow.